you are starting out in electronics and want to know more about oscilloscopes, or even if you are short of money and need to work with one. Keep watching, this video will interest you. Hey there, I'm Hugo Ferreira from Tech Corner TV, and today for our honest and impartial review, I have here the FNIR <laughs> FNIRSI DSO 150 oscilloscope. It's a low budget oscilloscope but with very interesting qualities. We will review it in a moment. Meanwhile, if you are new here, please make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every time we have new videos. Don't forget we have two other channels, the Tech Corner Reviews and Tips, where we do reviews of consumer electronics, and the Tech Corner Mailbag Day, where we open all the package that arrive for the channels and do the first impressions. So, let's start. We have here a DSO FNIRSI 150 oscilloscope, that it has a maximum real-time sampling of 1 mega sample per second, it has a maximum analog bandwidth of 200 kHz, and a sensitivity range from 5 mV per division to 20 V per division. Regarding the maximum input voltage is 50 V peak-to-peak, using a 1 times probe. It has also a 12 bits accuracy, not bad at all for a device like this. It has a record length of 1024 points, with a time range from 10 nanoseconds per division to a maximum 500 seconds per division, with three trigger modes, auto, normal and single. You should use a 9 volts power supply to power it up, and it has a 2 by 1.57 inches or 52 by 40 millimeters screen size. Let's start by reviewing what came in the box with this device. There is several versions of this oscilloscope and the version that I bought came with uh, BNC uh, with two alligator clips. Uh, I bought the already assembled version, but we can also buy a do-it-yourself version. And for that version, we have here a user manual that also as the assembly instructions. We have here in the corner the other version to be assembled with all the components and instructions on how to assemble it. As you can see it continues on the back and it has a second sheet of paper with two more pages of assembly instructions. This one is page 3 and in the last page, the final assembly with some operating instructions. Mm. So in this device uh, we have on the top uh, the BNC connector. We also have here a square wave generator for calibration and for test. On the left it has the coupling switch where we select the AC DC or ground. Let's leave it in DC for now. On the back we have the on off switch and the power supply socket. In the front it has four buttons and a knob. The vertical position, the horizontal position, the trigger button and the hold button. Let's take the plastic off. Okay. Uh, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Okay, it's off. Let me just clean a bit. And yeah, it is, here it is. Before moving to the usage review of the oscilloscope, we are going to do a small teardown of the device to see what's in it and what kind of components it's using and everything else. So let's open it carefully, separating the front part where the digital part is 
uh, and control the screen, and the analogic part that is on the bottom and control the signal. On the left we have the board that controls the analogic signal and on the right we have the ARM processor that controls the oscilloscope operations. Let me get the digital microscope so we can analyze better the ICs on the board. So the first IC that we have here that's uh, worth mentioning it's a ICL 7 and 6, 60. Uh, it's a CMOS voltage converter. Uh, it is able to co do conversions for positive and negative 5 volts supply. And we also have here a, uh, a 78. So seventy nine seventy eight L zero five terminal positive regulator and terminal negative regulator. Also a TL zero eight four. Uh, it is a quad high slew rate GFET input operational amplifier. Yeah, this one here, uh, and we also have, let me see, the 74 HC 4051D, and this one is a H-channel analog multiplexer, the multiplexer. And uh, we have also the 74HC4053D, and that one is a triple two channel analog multiplexer, the multiplexer. Okay, it seems we don't have here anything more interesting. Let me check. Okay, let's move on for the digital part yep so here let me turn this around okay where it is where it is uh, ah, okay here it is we have the stm 32 f 103 this is a um, arm cortex m3 core it has a maximum CPU speed of 72 megahertz and this module I believe it has 64k of uh, flash memory and 20k for RAM size yeah we have here also a CN2020 ANG I cannot find anything for this process uh, I don't know if it is a processor for this IC and we have here also a voltage regulator and here we have a wart connection you can hack the oscilloscope and connect to the PC to export data or something like that yeah that's all. Okay, now I have to assemble everything again. Uh, let me just put this here with carefully. We have to set the pins to, f to yeah, okay, it seems to be okay. Let me grab just the top, uh, yeah. Uh, okay all set just missing the this top part and the screws okay just let me okay put the knob again yeah it seems to be okay let me 
just clean the screen because of the fingers yeah and let's grab the power supply and connect to the socket let us try this out and it seems it is okay we have a launch houston we have a launch As I already mentioned, um, the DCO 150 has four buttons and a knob for adjusts. Um, let me connect the power and start explaining the button usage. It's booting up and here it is. Right now, the BNC connector is working as an antenna and capturing the RF signals that I have here in the workbench. And you can see here the interference of the radio waves. Um, so the first button that we have here is the vertical alignment button or sensibility selection where we can change the voltage per division um, the second button is the horizontal alignment button and also the button we use to select the time base or the time per division for each of these squares as we can see here in the display. Next uh, is the trigger button um, and final the OK button that has several functions one of them is the old function that frees the screen so we can easily read the, and analyze the information. Finally, we have the adjust button uh, that also has some additional functions. Uh, I will now connect the test probe and it should be possible to see that it will work as an antenna capturing all the radio signals around the oscilloscope yeah yeah you can see that let's see the the frequency changing let me freeze the image uh, as you can see it is working almost as a spectrum analyzer that captures the radio frequencies around us if we increase the, the voltage in the sensibility it, it probably will disappear yeah yeah that's it uh, let me take this probe out and uh, connect uh, this BNC cable um, that is connected to, um, to the function generator. Um, okay, let me just put this away. Okay, let's do some testing. Okay, just passing this to 0 0.2. Okay. Let's start. Okay, so pressing once, we can see that we are able to select the voltage per division or sensibility. Once selected, you can use the knob to change the the division, the voltage by the um, by division. So yeah, uh, when pressing the button again. The left arrow is now blue, and when the arrow is blue, you may use the adjust knob to change the offset of the signal, uh, like this, yeah. And keeping the button pressed for three seconds, we'll do a vertical alignment, you see, right now the line is on the top, uh, just on the side of the blue arrow uh, yeah it's, it is adjusted okay right now I'm going to turn the signal from the function generator on 
it's already on. Let me just um, yeah uh, fix here the voltage. I didn't the a moment and the time base. Let's see. Ah, okay, we are getting the signal right now. Just a moment. Yeah, and yep. So a little. Okay, now we have here the signal. Uh, it's a sine wave, as you may see. And so uh, here on the left corner, we have the voltage indicator. We have two volts. It relates to the Y uh, column of the graph. And each square has two volts height. Uh, we have also the DC indicator. It relates with the coupler, uh, DC, AC or ground. Uh, right now it's DC selected. And the ground is basically use it for calibration of the device. Next we have here the time-based measurement unit. That is the time that each division, each square represents on the graph. Right now, each division is equal to 0 0.2 milliseconds. And we can change it to 0 0.1 or 0 0.5, 1 millisecond, even go to 500 seconds. When we have uh, 15 milliseconds or more, the oscilloscope will start in the rolling mode uh, that the signal comes slowly from the left to the right. Uh, let's go back to 0 0.2 so we can see it. And you can see what was in the memory. Uh, this is the signal that was stored in the memory. And in a few moments, yeah, up you can see this happening it is a rolling mode uh, yeah let me just fix this a bit and yeah you see it here it's rolling yeah okay let's take this again you see it yeah, it, it's nice. Let's take this again to 0 0.2 milliseconds. It's a time base that works quite well for this demo. Uh, like the virtual align, we also have a horizontal uh, align. And to exemplify how it works, if we press the button for a few seconds, the just button, uh, you may see that on the top, uh, two small arrows appear. That means that uh, right now we are in fast adjust mode and if you use this, uh, the adjust button it will move a lot faster. For example we will move the cursor in the memory in a faster way. Let's take it all the way up to the beginning. Yeah. Okay, we're almost there. As you can see, the signal is moving to the left. We are almost at the beginning of the memory. Yeah. And we reach it. And if you press the sec division button for three seconds, uh, it will horizontally align the signal. As you can see, right now it's in the middle. So, yeah. So right now we have the trigger. In the trigger we have three modes, auto, normal and single. And if we press the single, he immediately uh, triggers and put the screen on hold. That's his function because the trigger value is in the middle of the signal. So we can uh, analyze the signal. Let's change the trigger value again. Let's put it in normal. And, and when we press the trigger again, 
we see that the arrow on the right side is now blue and we can move it. Let's take it out of the range of the signal. Okay. So, uh, like the other buttons, when we press for 3 seconds on the trigger, he will auto adjust to the center. Still on trigger, we have this small option that allow us to change the orientation of the line. Um, so if we change here on the knob, it's not working. Uh, let me change to square wave. Mm, what's going on? Ah, okay, it was on hold, sorry. So right now we have the signal starting at two and a an half uh, positive volts and when we use the adjust knob we can change the signal to start at uh, 2.5 negative volts so it will start uh, off and then on. I change the signal again to so the last button is the OK that we already saw that uh, runs the hold and also if we press it for 3 seconds it will disable the matrix from the screen so we can have uh, a clean screen to see the signal that is being displayed uh, on the screen. We also have here some keys combinations for example, on the bench oscilloscopes, we have the auto button to reset the signal. Uh, it doesn't matter how bad you screw up the signal. Pressing auto, uh, you will always be, or you will always have the, the signal reset. And, and in this oscilloscope, you have something similar pressing the second if trigger. I'm trying to screw up uh, as much as I can the signal. So let's press the two buttons to see uh, what is going on. Okay, so we press the, the both of the buttons and it should be, should reset the signal to the default. I believe that I screw up. Ah, okay, there it is. It's on the middle. Uh, you see the arrows right now are resetted. But I don't know why the wave it's not on the signal. Ah, okay, it was on hold, sorry. If you see now, the signal is on the zero. In terms of metrics, uh, we have here the frequency, uh, the cycle time, in this case is 0 0.999 milliseconds, the pulse width, and the dirty cycle. Uh, regarding the dirty cycle, uh, it's the time that the signal is on, on the cycle. Let's try to see this on the square wave, where we can see w where the signal is on and where it's off. Right now, in this part, is off. And uh, as I reduce the data cycle, you can see that over there is the percentage and it's lower. Uh, I just increased to 50% and it's the same in the sine wave. So here we have the Vmax, Vmin, uh, the average uh, voltage, the voltage peak to peak and the voltage RMS. The RMS voltage uh, is 2.10 volts. There is another function available to us. Uh, this uh, It's the save waveform that it can be achieved by combining the SECDIV key with the adjust. And that will allow us to save the, the waveform on the screen for later uh, analysis. Let's try. To see the difference, let me change the waveform to a square wave. And now we will use the trigger and adjust to recall the waveform, as you can see. So we can use this information to compare waveforms and, uh, and the metrics between two waveforms. 
um, and the good part is that this information is saved even after we turn the oscilloscope off. So to wrap things up, I already mentioned, but uh, let's do it again. To select the, the adjust, you just press the key once and again until you have the blue arrow looks again and when you have the blue arrow you can use the selector to position the sine wave uh, sorry the square wave and if you press the adjust you will be will enable or disable the fast um, adjustment and this will work in all the options on the time base, on the trigger, uh, whatever. So right now, let's exchange these to um, a different view. We have here the signal generator screen on the left and the oscilloscope on the right. And we will do some testing uh, to see how the oscilloscope response to the to the changes on the function generator so right now we have a 1 kilohertz signal with a 5 volts peak to peak amplitude and yep okay so let's take this to 2 kappa hertz 3 kappa hertz okay 4 5 let's take it up to 6 to see how it handles well it's starting to stretch a little but nothing serious okay let's try to change here the voltage to 1 volt change the time base yeah still good still good no problems let's see okay so we will now take it to the 200 kilohertz, it's the limit. And in the limit of the oscilloscope, we can see the signal is basically um, unusable. It's worthless. Uh, let's try to change the voltage, the amplitude, to see how it handles. Okay, and if we set the time base to 10 nanoseconds, we can have here some kind of line, but this is a sine wave, and let's stop this, and as you can see, it's pretty worthless. Um, yeah. Uh, no good. Yeah, but uh, the what they say is that we should have an oscilloscope that has at least the double bandwidth of the signal generated by the function generator so yeah i i, I don't know I, i'm i'm kind of stretching the things out here let's try 100 megahertz uh, sorry 100 kilohertz and with of the signal yeah we 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 have a, a decent sine wave at at 10 nanoseconds so yeah i think it will handle it we should not forget that we have here a 20 dollars uh, oscilloscope uh, yeah as you can see we have a sine wave let's put this uh, again at one kappa hertz uh, pass this to 0 0.2 milliseconds yeah we have here a fine sine wave now considering that this is a oscilloscope for starters for someone that is starting in uh, how you say uh, in electronics uh, it's it's not bad it's not bad it has a good response the accuracy it's 12 bits and yeah it, it does the job we have to to understand what we are dealing and as you can see it responds quite quickly and yeah this is a oscilloscope for for beginners if we spend the 
30 more dollars, we can have a much better oscilloscope with different functions and with some professional level already, uh, a portable oscill oscilloscope, of course. And my unit came already assembled, because if you buy one to assemble, you can even have it uh, in about 70 to $15. So let's try now a square wave. Obviously, the signal from the function generator is quite good. It's a quite good function generator. But you can see that you have here a very good square wave. Uh, yeah, the, the the response time it's quite quite good, as you can see. So yeah, I, I'm quite happy with this. To be honest, you don't see here any jitter on the signal. Uh, the corners of the square wave are 90 degrees without uh, deformations. So yeah, yeah. Even if we change the amplitude, as you can see, right now it's out of the trigger. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It has a very nice response. Okay, so what we have next? The offset, changing the offset. It changes quite quickly. Yeah. It stops very quickly as we went on the trigger. Uh, we have the triangle signal or ramp. Let me see. And it's quite well defined. It's one of the things that uh, I'm, I'm quite amazed. The, the signal, it's very well defined. No jitter at all. Right now, I am testing the pulse uh, signal. We tested before the square wave, but right now it's really the, the pulse from the function generator. We have also the noise. Let's see if we can get some focus here. Yeah, uh, let me bring this down. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. It's centrally, uh, vertically aligned. We have here the, the noise. So, and right now we have the arbitrary uh, function. Let's vertical align again. And we have here the signal. Let's try, let's try to, uh, okay. Yes, we have it here. It's quite good, really. Okay, I tried to sweep, so we can see the signal moving and the refresh rate. And yeah, yeah, to be honest, it's quite surprising the the quality of the signal. The yeah, very good. Okay, so. This is a quite nice device for the price. Uh, I bought this for an article and some videos that we'll, we'll have uh, for a $60 electronic lab equipment. It will have an oscilloscope, this one, um, a function generator, multimeter, solder, iron, and yeah, I think it will do the function quite well. This is a clone f of the original, but on the for the purpose that we want, uh, the price uh, has to be this one. So, so let's wrap this up. Well, what to say about this small oscilloscope? Uh, it surprised me uh, by the positive. Uh, it was bought for an article that uh, I am making for the Tech Corner TV, some videos and a, an article about um, electronics equipment uh, f uh, for a lab, uh, home lab uh, below $60. And this is the highest 
uh, item on that list. Uh, that list includes uh, oscilloscope, uh, function generator, multimeter, uh, soldering iron, and everything else. And when I first bought this device, uh, I was not expecting, to be honest, uh, a device with a well, a, a reliable uh, information and signals. It it has a lot of flaws, but. We have to to understand that we are buying a oscilloscope for twenty dollars, and we cannot get much better than this for this price. Uh, it was a nice surprise, uh, to be honest. Uh, as I said, I was not expecting to have so much features in a, a so uh, cheap um, oscilloscope. We have uh, memory save uh, display. We can save the, the information on display. We can retrieve it. Uh, it only has one uh, probe connector, but even so, it's more than enough if you are learning and you are starting with electronics, or even if you only want to do time to time some tests and don't need a, a weak equipment like this and yeah it will do the job and the, the 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 surprising part is that it will do the job fairly well uh, it has 2 bit uh, 12 bits uh, resolution only one megabit sampling rate uh, it supports only 200k uh, in analog bandwidth and at 200k it will have uh, lots of problems with the uh, signal it will be almost uh, well to forget uh, but anyway if for example if you are doing projects with arduino or raspberry pi or well small electronics this will be perfect really uh, a better oscilloscope it's always a, a good uh, tool to have but maybe you don't need to to spend that if you are not using it. So uh, this is, as I told, this was about twenty bucks, uh, US dollars. Uh, but you have for cert, uh, for forty dollars already a better model with more information on the screen with uh, some some more functions. And you have uh, fairly good models for sixty dollars, uh, also portable. So it it depends if you are well, if you are hoping to to give some some usage in the future or not. For me, this was a nice surprise. It will be a nice addition to the kit that uh, I am assembling for Tech Corner for as i told you the electronic labs electronic home lab for 60 dollars uh, 50 euros uh, more or less and yeah you will see this on a, a article that will come as soon as all the the match all the items that i ordered are here mostly most of them already here already are and yeah nice surprise nice item you have to to understand that you have here what you are paying and the cost benefits uh, relation uh, depends more to the benefits also you have a lot of features for the cost for the cost and with a fairly any good enough um, precision it has flaws yes i already told that uh, sometimes you have to turn it over and start again because it hangs. Uh, software is it's well, it is what it is. It's not perfect, but again, it will do the job if you need to test something. I didn't use the probe uh, that come with it. Uh, I think it is here. Uh, this, yeah, 
I used the directly connected for the test directly connected to the function generator, waveform generator, uh, but you can buy a probe, AliExpress, like $5 or, or even less that will allow you to, to use, for example, 10 times uh, uh, the 10 times uh, probe with higher voltage in the signals. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's a good item. Uh, after all, uh, like all the the all uh, everything uh, on balance. Yeah, I think this is a very good item. It's cheap. It has a lot of features. We cannot ask for more. Uh, so I hope this uh, small video help you. Uh, it will it will be useful for for you and if it was please give a thumbs up uh, if you haven't already please subscribe and help this channel grow and thank you for watching until the end stay safe i hope to see you in our next video bye cheers